Good afternoon, guys. Um, so, big AFC opponent this weekend, New England Patriots. Very, very well coached, as you guys know. They always have been. Uh, they're going to play hard. They're going to play physical. And that's going to be our our task this week is to match their physicality because they're, you know, they're, uh, they're a group that gets after it on every phase uh, on special teams and, you know, kind of where we need to go. And that's where I'm trying to lead our guys and, and doing the same thing and being fast and physical and playing sound, disciplined football. And, you know, we're not there yet. we got a little ways to go. Uh, but I like our group and I like how we're progressing in certain areas. we just got to you know, put a full game together. And when we do that, I think we're going to really help our team start winning some games. Mike, you were with Daniel Carlson in Minnesota. You went through that situation. Mm -hmm. Is there things you can learn, you, you learn from through that situation that you've been able to apply as you deal with Cade, kind of going through some of the, the struggles? You know, that's a really good question. We, we learned, I know I learned, uh, you know, when Daniel got to the Vikings, there was certain members of the Vikings that weren't real fired up that he was drafted. I was very fired up. You know, he's a very good kicker. Um, they, we in Minnesota did not handle that situation very well. We did not help him, Daniel, I'm talking about mentally. And, you know, he was probably not as strong uh, as Cade at that age. I know he is now. He's doing a great job. He's a great kicker, as you guys know. I think Cade's much stronger mentally. And because of that situation and the way our head coach handles uh, Cade and has handled Cade, which has been fantastic and really good for his psyche and his confidence. So we learned from that situation. I know that when you have good leadership from the head coach and, you know, that along with, you know, me helping and, and helping the young man stay positive, uh, that that speaks volumes for our football team. And so that's why I think I know he'll be just fine because he's in a good place mentally. Uh, he kicked the ball really well yesterday. Um, he's never really lost his confidence. He was just as disappointed as any one of us, as any one of our fans. Uh, but we did learn from that situation, to answer your question. Why do you think that side of the field has all of a sudden become the problem? It's funny because it's really not. I mean, we actually want that side of the field more than the other side. Uh, it wasn't that even that windy, to be honest with you. Um, it, was, it was a beautiful day. Um, so I don't, I don't think the wind or the, that side of the field had anything to do with it. Because we talked to Kate right after, and he said that he knows there was a wind. He just said I pushed it. Maybe it's a loaded question, but what does that mean? Like when he says he just pushed well, it. Well, you know, from that hash, he knew he had to get over a little bit right, for, you know, from that distance. And he fouled his line. I thought he hit that ball really well. The one at the end of the first half, he did not hit well, as I'm sure he told you. But the one at the end of the game, he hit very well. It fouled his line. His line was just a little bit too far to the right. Yeah, I thought he hit the ball well there. What's his process like after a game like this where he said that's the first time he's ever missed two field goals in a single game? So what, what was his process like of, of talking through that, going through the technique stuff, things like that? You know, we just you know, kind of let it go after the game and let, it, let him process it. And, and uh, we watched the tape together the next morning, and he knew exactly what he did and um, you know, studied it again uh, yesterday and went through it and then went through all his kicks from yesterday this morning. Um, you know, he'll, he's just, he'll be just fine. He's a very talented young man, as you guys know. He's been, he's stood up, you know, big for us before, and he will again in the future. Uh, I will never use an excuse of, of youth, you know, because he is young. Um, but when you go through something like this as a young player, uh, I think it shows his intestinal fortitude coming back from this and see how he reacts. And I, I have a lot of confidence in Katie York. Situation like that does help to then build his confidence, experiencing something like that that he hasn't before. Yeah, it could. You know what? It really could. Um, you know, I would not doubt that. You know, you never, like you said, you never want to go through that that situation. You, you know, I fully expect him to make every kick because he's good enough to do that. Realistically, we know that's not true, unless you're uh, the guy in Baltimore. But um, but I think he's he's working to get there, and he's working for consistency. And you know, he's only going to get better, in my opinion. Just, they look fine to me, but are the holds fine? Everything all right? Snap and holds were fantastic. Protection was really good. We didn't protect as well in Atlanta. We had a, nothing major, but we fixed those issues, and I thought we did a nice job protecting the launch point. Add the, add the pressure for any person in their career when you're in these close games, and it's like, you know, kind of yeah. life-altering moment. It's uh, it is crazy how, but it's like that across the league. It's been it's been a, a crazy year. Every game comes down to one score or a field goal here or a touchdown there. Um, it kind of makes it exciting. You know, it ages me quickly, but um, I, I I think because he went through that situation, he'll learn and he'll continue to improve. Spark on your punt return. 
you've used three different guys back there. Mm -hmm. Their averages are almost identical, around five yards per return. Mm -hmm. We were hoping to get a big one uh, this past week because we knew, uh, we felt that we can get a line drive kick and the only punt they had was a line drive. We came up and fair caught at what, 36, 37 yards. So I think the more opportunities that we get, we'll, um, we'll be able to get Chester going. Coach Belichick yesterday was talking about your special teams and he said that you've gotten even faster um, than last year. Do you agree with that? That we're faster than last year? Um, I think he's probably talking about the Anthony Bell because he's really fast and he's done a nice job on kickoff and on punt coverage. Um, I would imagine he's the guy that jumped out. We didn't have anybody with that kind of speed. You know, MJ Stewart was fast, but not that fast. And M MJ's doing a great job in Houston. You know, we had Mac Wilson. Now he has Mac Wilson. And Mac Wilson made a lot of plays for us on kickoff. I don't know if we're any faster, but um, we have one guy who's probably faster than the rest. Yeah. Mike, uh, Belichick's special teams for 23 years. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. Um, he's a special team coach at heart, I guess. Sure he is. Where he started to, is he looked upon it in your little circle, your fraternity, as as that? That's kind of a special. You know, team. Coach Belichick, I think, in any fraternity, is looked at as a as a great coach. You know, he's a Hall of Famer, um, won all those Super Bowls. I think the what the thing I like about Coach is that he does things the right way. Situational football, emphasizes special teams. Um, you know, knowing that kind of like our, our head coach, Coach Stefanski, he emphasizes how to win each game. Every game is different. You know, I worked for uh, Josh McDaniels in Denver, and, and when Josh was young, it came from Coach Belichick's, tr Belichick's tree, obviously. And that's the one thing that always jumped out of me with Josh was, you know, from Coach Belichick, was the situational football, complimentary football, playing great special teams one week, playing great defense the next week, playing great offense the next week, because every every game, in order to win a game, is different. And I know our head coach does the same thing. What makes uh, Folk so consistent? He hasn't missed inside, whatever the number is. Yeah, he's amazing. He uh, hits a true ball every time. Every single time he goes out there, it's the same process for him, uh, same ball strike for him. Uh, the snap and holder where they should be, and normally they are because their, their snapper, of course, is from the Naval Academy. You know he's a good player. And then uh, their holder, Jake Bailey, has done a nice job. Um, you know, he's just a very consistent kicker and has been for a long, long time. You don't stay in the league this long that, that Nick has done this and, and not be consistent. So I think that's, that's the key for him, doing the same exact thing over and over and over again and hitting that same ball, no matter the wind, no matter the weather. Sam Chester is going to be the guy returning kicks moving forward. How safe do you want to be? <laughs> What's been uh, Corey's biggest strength for you guys this so far this year? You know, Corey's been uh, very consistent. He he hits a uh, he can hit a big ball for us when we need it. I get on him about out kicking his coverage sometimes. Um, you know, I I tell him at sixty yard four nine, I'd rather have a fifty yard five three, and he has the ability to do that. Uh, he's been very good directionally, where we haven't had that in the last few years. He's a very good directional punter. He's been outstanding inside the twenty, inside the ten, giving us opportunities to pin people deep. Um, I knew that when we looked at him two years ago when coming out of Buffalo, and then of course this past year out of Green Bay. We knew that he was the type of guy we needed here in our weather, and he's really responded well. I'm proud of him, and I hope he continues to get better. Probably had more left-footed punters than anyone simply yeah. because he's been in the league this long. But yeah, Ryan we've had Allen. two in a row now. Mm -hmm. Is there an advantage there, do you think? It, it can be. Not not as much anymore, Tony, because um, there are more left-footed punters in the league, but it used to be there would be, you know, out of 32 teams, there might be four left -foot lefties. And so when you play, a left-footed punter is different. And you know you can change the jugs, the spin on the jugs, and make it a left-footed punter. We'll, we'll do that. Uh, when I was in Minnesota, we, would, we had a right-footed punter every time, the whole time I was there. And so we would have to bring in a left-footed punter for a workout so our returner can get some work in, you know I mean, against a lefty. I don't know what the stats are. Yeah, I got way too much to worry about than, than that. I probably should. I apologize. <laughs>